Okay, hello everyone, and thank you for joining us today for day two of Money Show's Powerful Investing and Trading Strategies Virtual Expo. I'd like to introduce you to Gary Kaltbaum, a registered investment advisor with more than 40 years of experience in the markets. He is the owner and president of Kaltbaum Capital Management, a financial investment advisory firm headquartered in Orlando, Florida. The chat is open in case any of our audience members have questions, which we'll address towards the end of the presentation, time permitting. I'm sure everyone's eager to get started. So without further delay, I'll leave you in the hands of our speaker and I'll be right here in case you need anything. Gary, I'll I, stop sharing my screen and the floor is yours. All right, thank you. Uh, greetings all. Uh, first off, I would love to uh, thank the uh, Money Show people for inviting me uh, to do this. Uh, we have a simple goal here is to show you what's happening in the market right now in a dose of reality, uh, which we uh, always worry about, especially when things... Well, you've seen what we have seen over the uh, past uh, few months with certain uh, areas of the market. So the first thing I want to do is um, give a warning shot. Uh, and, and and it's a very simple warning shot of markets will not go up forever. Maybe this bullish phase will last another five years, three years, one year. Just be ready. And those who have the ability to protect the capital when things turn down and be out of the market because they know how to read markets, win the day big time. Uh, and we have done that every time because we believe there's a roadmap to the markets and, and we just simply follow it. I just want to start out with the easy stuff. Uh, the S&P, uh, we use a 21-day moving average. That's the green. The red is the 50-day, which usually what a stock market follows. Gary, Gary, yes. sorry to interrupt. Do you want... Um... You need to share your screen again, just so people can see if, if you're pointing to charts. Whoopsie. Huh. What I did. Share screen. There you go. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. Whew. Thanks for watching. Anyway, so there's your S&P, and it has, since I can tell you, if that ever works, that's the day that the inflation numbers changed and the bond market ramped. That's where we, we bought into the S&P that day. And normally, uh, we're going to get scare days. And normally, we're going to get good corrections. And there's been nor nothing normal about what we're seeing in the S&P 500. Pretty much drifting up, drifting up, drifting up, drifting up. And as long as that continues, terrific. A break of that green line will be the first shot across the bow. A break of the red really changes the complexion. And let me repeat, normally an S&P will ride up the 50-day the moving average, not the, the 21. It just tells you how much stronger things are for the S&P 500. Uh, NASDAQ, almost the same, having a little trouble over the last three weeks. And we have this one little issue in the NASDAQ that you really do need to know. This is imperative. This is important. This is something to keep in the file manager that most don't even talk about. But there's your little NASDAQ drifting up nicely, moving up nicely. Uh, you got your NVIDIA day about three weeks ago when it gapped up. But I just want you to notice the advanced decline on the NASDAQ. Look what it has done. If I can figure this out. There you go. Over here. So they keep talking Magnificent 7, which is really the Magnificent 5 right now. But really, we think there's like about 25 to 30 stocks that are really driving this. And we're going to watch them like a hawk. If the market ever loses them, and I'm not talking about pulling back uh, settling down. I'm talking about losing them. Just like in 21, little by little, piece by piece, the market lost all the growth stocks. If the market ever loses those 20 or 30, there's just so much underneath that is weaker in the NASDAQ that most people don't talk about because everybody's onto the stuff that's working, and that's all rightfully so. But we also want you to remember the stuff that's working is without a doubt gets overloved, overbought, overleveraged at the most inopportune times 
So that's why we watch them closely. And to make this point, look at the NYSC advanced declines. So definitively more better action in the uh, NYSE right now on a broader base uh, than the NASDAQ. And we can rifle through, and we're not going to have enough time, uh, 300 NASDAQ names, some you've heard of and some important, that just topped out badly in just the last few weeks, if I can put the right symbols in. Uh, look at Palo Alto. Just for starters, it, it's only one name. It's no big deal. Here's MDB. This is in software. Uh, and again, we can go through a ton of them, but you get the point. We're also going to be watching along the NASDAQ this. Here's your uh, software IGV. And we're just making note that you had three, what we call icky, uh, drops, but still holding the 50-day. Uh, that's going to be necessary. Big time necessary. And in the software... Microsoft, which, by the way, we just stopped out of after it broke out on uh, uh, last Thursday and just tucked right back in. Uh, we did make good coin off of it right here, uh, and we're still up overall, but uh, we hate stopping out of anything. Um, so Microsoft's going to be of import without a doubt. We think in the software, CrowdStrike is going to be of import. Look how it holds the 50-day even as they smack it down there. Oracle which now gapped up and is on our radar, uh, but we're a little bit wary about the whole software. So we're going to be watching all these software names. If they take out the software, trouble. But so far, hanging in there with some warts. And then we get to something of import, and that's the socks. So on the Thursday before this pretty much gargantuan, Reversal day right there. Uh, we had stated uh, to our people that we're worried we're going to get some sort of exhaustion move. And usually it's on. They open it up and they reverse it. And it just happened to be a pretty monstrous reversal. So just letting you know, the semis are under some pressure. But I want you to notice, even though it's below the 21 day, it's still above the 50 day. And that's the norm. We'll be watching that. But even there, and this is important, I have on my screen one area of the market, the semis. I have 100 names, and I can tell you I have seen days where six were up, 94 down, but the socks was still up. And that's because of the big names that really have influence on it did the job. And you, knew, you know what they are, so we'll go right to NVIDIA. Everybody has the interest. Very simple. Hold support at 850 right now. We're not in it right now for the first time since this beautiful breakout right there, which we nailed. And the only thing I'm upset about is should have bought 50% of our bucks in it because it was so beautiful. So this still holds sway with NVIDIA. You're now getting some sort of this. And if we break above it, good. If we br break below it, bad. But there's some warts out there now because AMD was working. And you can see it took out this last move and now teasing the 50-day moving average. And we can get into the news about NVIDIA getting into the business, but we only care about price and movement. SMCI does a, a secondary. And at 80, 875, they added it at 900 today and not really working here. So that may have topped. Again, so we're just adding up the pieces of the puzzle here on the important names. Taiwan Semi, that breakout pretty much has failed so far. Again, these are the things we're watching. And just to make note again, as I said, you got NVIDIA, you got ASML, uh, which is on pullback but has been strong. You got the equipment makers because uh, our government just handed out another $20 billion to Intel even though they make billions because we're a big giant slush fund these days. So KLA and LRCX look fine and dandy. But then, as I said, as I go through my whole screen in the semis, I will find Texas Instruments, that nothing going on, as so many others. So, we're oh, I forgot about Marvel also. And that one they took out. So it is going to be imperative to watch now the semis.
and the software with the tech and whatever big names are left. Because as you know, Apple right now is pretty much comatose. And, uh, and excuse me, Tesla, uh, the same at this point. I don't even know why they continue to call it the Magnificent Seven. Google's been uh, somewhat troublesome, but they just had the news with, hopefully with uh, Apple iPhones. In the big names, Amazon still just acts fine. You don't want to see it break the green. Uh, Meta, which we sold down a little bit yesterday, that we own at 350 and we're PO'd that we sold down because it reversed. Uh, that needs to hold the last week. Uh, and again, we're going to be watching these spots like a hawk. Why? We know for as fact they are overloved, overowned, over leveraged right now. And the worst stocks are the ones that topped from those positions. Remember back in 2021, all the favorites, little by little, piece by piece, inch by inch, and it was good night into a bear market. Uh, I have to just, I I wasn't going to show Chipotle today. Just be careful. They had it up 205. It's a 50 for one stock split. I don't think most people know this, but the bigger the stock split, not the greatest news. Just remember that. They're going to go from whatever shares under uh, uh, that trade times it by 50. That is a lot of stock. It's going to trade differently. Uh, and usually big stock splits happen nearer to tops, uh, not at bottoms, though they are doing some pretty good business right now. Next, just want to get back real quick. Well, actually, we can just go right to the crypto. Be careful about what we call Eiffel Tower moves. Uh, we uh, we actually thought there was a chance it was going to top here and then made another move. And who the heck knows where these things go? We just want to let you know all crazy moves will have a shelf life. And we do want to let you know that pretty much in here, we're getting calls and contacts from people that are probably in their 70s and 80s that have CDs and are telling us they have CDs. Shouldn't I trade my CDs for crypto? Because I keep hearing that crypto is going to be safer than my CDs. Notice. They weren't calling over here. If you go to the weekly, they certainly weren't calling while this was going on. So just be aware that we are not telling you it's not going higher. Just know where things have come from. Know where risk is. And typically risk is when this thing hit 1,800, the 50-day moving average was 800. Uh, we're going to call that a little too stretched and extended, and we'll see where it takes us. And yes, we do know this is not a stock. It is the crypto, anything possible. This is the high-octane crypto, by the way, micro strategy. Uh, we put out to our service uh, the buy of the iBit right here, which is like the a, a Bitcoin ETF. And we sold three times on the way up, and we're not in it right now. Next up on the hit parade. Uh, emerging. Uh, we had a void on oils for, I think, a year or so. And how do you change from bearish to bullish or potentially bullish is you go through a bear and a bearish phase is simple. You are in a downtrend as the 50-day moving average is no longer ascending. It is descending. By the way, they tell us this doesn't work and that's fine and dandy. The more that say that, thrills us. And as you notice what's happened here, it changed when it broke back above and is now sticking. And it doesn't guarantee it's going to keep working. For all we know, oil prices top out tomorrow and they take it right back down. But all we want to do is read this certain roadmap. And we have studied the roadmap of bull and bear markets uh, from people like William O'Neill, Stan Weinstein, and all the greats that have what, the greatest eyes in the business. So right now, you definitely have oils uh, acting much better, some much better than others. You got some new highs out there in things like uh, Tidewater. You have things just turning the corner recently like Schlumberger. It, it's, it's a very tough call on which one, but the ETFs are the best way. The big oil acting best as it's back up near the highs. 
The OIH is the services. Uh, the XOP is the uh, production, a little less than the XLE, and just better right now. But watch oil prices. And also keep in mind oil prices, if they go higher, probably don't want to own airlines and cruise lines. Just uh, food for thought uh, on intermarket work uh, when it comes to oils. The gold. Well, very simple. We don't even want to look at the one year. We want to look at, we want to go back years. So you had that high in 2011. You had the high in 2020. The one early 22 was that early, late 21. We have broken above it. All-time high, multi-year breakout. Again, does not guarantee it's going to work. And there's never any guarantee. That's why we babysit everything. But so far, so good. Little too far, too fast. Watch how it pulls back. So far, it's constructive, not crazy. And, and we'll see where it takes us. The only issue is forever in bull markets, gold miners always were doing better than the metal. Just isn't happening anymore. And you can see the weekly on the gold miners versus the metal. What a difference. So I'd be wary of the gold miners. Maybe they catch up. I don't know. The We, we just measure by strength. HMY is a heck of a lot stronger than this guy. Newmont, which continues to act like the south end of a northbound jackass. And again, all we're doing is measuring strength when it comes to commodities. Now notice gold, oils, copper coming up the right side, breaking into new highs. The CRB index, which I won't show here, has been on the move. Just wondering a little bit about, okay, commodities, what is that going to mean? Because in a couple of hours today, we have Mr. Bubble, uh, I almost said Bernanke by accident, Powell, is not going to raise rates, but he'll probably telegraph, you know, we're gonna, we can look to you know, do this or do that, which is pretty much meaningless. If you lower a quarter point, doesn't matter, lowers a half. That's where I take you. And this is all I've been saying on TV. And in case you don't know, I'm a Fox News business contributor. I'm on just about every day on some of the shows. If the 10-year yield breaks above here, combined with commodities going higher, just something we're watching. And you can see that you went right up to the high, now pulling back, we have absolutely no idea what the reaction is going to be at 2 o'clock today and his press conference, which is pretty much nonsense. Uh, but we'll be paying attention to the reaction. For us, it is not the news. It is the reaction to the news that always is going to matter most. Everything else is noise to us. Now, we showed you the S&P. Next up. Watch, look at the financials. The big banks, by the way, versus the regionals, you know where the confidence is, right? But let's go back to the big banks. And this is the other thing we're going to be watching closely. We know as fact, as student of every bull and bear market, and let me be clear, uh, this is Market Surge, used to be uh, Market Smith. It allows me to go back for the first day the market traded, I can go to any date and see what the markets did and study every bull and bear markets. And I can tell you flat out the semiconductors and financials. As long as they're doing what they're doing, the market overall, fine and dandy. If we ever lose them, then we're going to be talking. So far, so good. That to me is the big of the big. Everything else, noise. And then you add in the leading stocks. If the leading growth names, and we know who they are, if they start gagging, we'll know it. And that's what we're going to be watching for going forward. And we particularly watch, we watch close every day, but particularly as we continue to go higher, as bearishness, which has now hit a low since 2018, there's no bears. As we see a lot of froth and speculation, 
getting calls from elderly wanting to buy crypto with their CDs. It just puts us on notice. And everything we do is just putting the pieces of the puzzle together. That's all. The sentiment is secondary. Price is primary. But we just put it together. We remember back in 08 when we had the financial crisis. I even went to my bank and took out 25000 in cash and put it in my house because how worried I was about the financial system. Talk about extreme sentiment. And then in my, uh, March of uh, 09, we turned up as uh, Mr. Bubble Original, decided to print uh, a ton of money and got the juices flowing again. Uh, so just, again, important. Keep writing it up. Keep looking for strength. Try to find emergence. What we mean by that is, oh, Oracle just gapped up. We love stocks that gap up. It tells you the, the complexion has changed for the stock. Uh, big, strong uh, hands, maybe, because they did that with Dell. And look what happened. They did it with AVAV. And look what happened. They just did it recently with IoT. And look what happened. And we're showing this not to depress you. Oh, NTAP. But to let you know, everything we do is taking information for the mar from the market. So, oh, all these gaps that we love aren't working. Well, we'll take a step back and we'll wait till they some of them start to work, not being the guinea pig. And we can tell you flat out, in ripe markets, stocks that gap up because they surprise big time on their earnings and sales growth, that expectations was $2 billion for sales, but they did three five, and earnings were $1.50, and, the, and they expected only $0.75. Cents. That's the stuff of greatness in markets, but you need the right markets. And I can tell you, a lot of these gaps that are happening... That does not happen in bear markets. So I still think we're in good stead. Well, I know we're in good stead as long as we ride the rails of those 21 day, of the 21 day. If we take down to the 50 day, I, is, that would be A-OK -okay also. But we'd be on notice that we're losing a little bit of strength, a little bit of sponsorship, uh, but not sweating. As far as new stuff, I can tell you, it's gotten a little tougher. Uh, we are very good at identifying stocks breaking out of range. And again, we were, we were on TV, on our radio audience here the day before saying, if this breaks out, it'll be the best looking breakout of the most important tech stock in the market that we've seen in ages. And you see what came of that. We don't see anything like that right now because we've had a good move. Understandable. But we're constantly on the lookout for new stuff. What's showing up? And just not a lot this second, which tells me maybe, and you're looking at NVIDIA, you may just have some time in here, which is not the end of the world. And the fact of the matter is, after this huge move up, they sat around for five months before getting going. We think it's a little bit different this time because of how big this move, and it's another move. But there's nothing that doesn't say, hey, we're just going to sit around right now for a few weeks or maybe even a couple of months, let people drive themselves up a wall wanting it to go again and go again a dozen. And then when nobody expects it, it gets going again. But we're also going to be watching the weight of the evidence. We know which stocks are AI, which stocks are not. Uh, near term, the little worry, they have this big conference and they are raising the bar big time in NVIDIA. I mean, some of the numbers and some of the things that came out of their mouths, uh, you would think you were looking into the heavens. They had better come through with some of the things they came out with. We'll see. I want you to notice the green line. A break below that will have implications for the rest of the semis, the NASDAQ. I'm letting you know. Moons ago, it was Apple that you can, you'll know what the NASDAQ was going to do as Apple moved. It's not Apple anymore. NVIDIA, I think, has taken over that mantle. 
and you can see on that reversal what everything did. Now, if it sticks, terrific. If it takes that green line out, even though it's at much higher levels, it will matter. And if it ever takes out the 50, well, that would mean we're going into a corrective phase of the NASDAQ uh, of what unknown price and time doesn't mean bear market. You know, we normally you're supposed to have 10 percent correction in NASDAQ, but these days doesn't work so well. Um, so just letting you know, we, we have the Hawkeye on this name. That's how important we think it is. And again, the little worry is if you want some of the things out of the CEO's mouth, and God bless them, the guy's a major success story, and they are driving the bus. Man, raise the bar. They left no room for any, any disappointment whatsoever. Zero. So we'll be paying attention. We know our spots of trouble at this point in time. While we think a lot of people have gotten all bullish recently after the move, that is just taking hold of the situation. Names we're following right now, just in consideration, just going to, and we don't own them yet. Notice Royal Caribbean, the strongest cruise line, maybe setting up to break out again. That's a name we're watching for starters. And the, the only problem is there's not a lot. Um, not, not a lot of perfection out there. And that usually needs time. You need time to get things to break out well. Meaning time sitting around, extending long bases. That's a trading range. And then get the move out here. And we have one little um, column of names with potential on breakouts, you know, like we saw, and this is off the beaten path, Beacon Roofing breaks out yesterday. There's not many of these if you want to own Beacon Roofing. Um, but that's this is the type of look uh, we want to see. It's a name like COR, by the way, we're not advocating buying or selling or shorting or covering. We're just showing you what's happening in real time in this market. Uh, so there's a few things out there, just not a lot. And I would not be surprised if, well, we got the Fed today. I better not say I would not be surprised by anything because we really do not know what this man's going to say. Anything is possible. Oh, and by the way, it's an election year. So who the heck knows? Um, so let me just, I know we're getting close. Um just all in all, sentiment is about as bullish as I've seen. Complacency is about as bullish as I've seen. So these are extremes. People calling up about crypto to buy crypto after a gargantuan move. These are just things that are in the file manager, but the market acts fine. The underlying market underneath the at NASDAQ, there's some issues out there as I showed again and again, I should show it one more time. This is advanced declines on the NASDAQ. While the NASDAQ is still in good stead and is, and is acting fine, it tells you it's very narrow and you better stick to the narrow. Um, and that's going to be important because narrow markets, when they start coming in, when they get in trouble, are much easier to sell off because there's only a few names holding up that they come after. I did forget to show the the uh, redheaded stepchild. Nothing against redheads in Russell two thousand. Uh, you know it, it's come off the lows pretty big, but still, in relation, uh, there's the Russell. Look where it is. Nasdaq's back at the highs. The S and P is taken out the highs. So small caps as a whole are still not the place to be. I'm told there's a bunch of regionals in there and there's your KRE that's still got nothing going on. And I need to show the weekly on that to show you how much trouble there's been. If you're doing financials, go big, don't go small. That should be the message of what we're, we're showing you right here. Maybe that changes one day. It hasn't changed as of yet. And listen, we believe the market's a race. 
always stick with the strength and always babysit it until it's not so strong. Um, Want to finish up before I forget things. Japan has stagflation and acts well. That's the EWJ. They're just buying up their whole uh, market, um, the government. And by the way, uh, we read, oh, they raise rates. They just raise rates to 0%. So if we, have an, if we want to know why that market's doing well while they have economic troubles, well, if you buy up the whole market and uh, you raise rates only to 0%, you have what we call easy money. Um, and I think we're good. Right on time. Uh, any right on time. Any questions, you can email me at garyk.com or uh, gcallbomb at callbomb.net. We answer pretty quickly. And I, I just leave you with how I look at things in the markets. When wrong, be wrong fast and be wrong small. When right, do your best to let them run as far as they can go. And to be clear, that's the toughest part for most because... If you have a good stopping out uh, trait and you know how to get out when wrong, if you're able to keep the runners running as long as they can go, you are making some big coin, but they don't make it easy. Just remember, you got to work at the markets. They just don't hand it off to you. So thank you very much for joining. Always a, a, uh, an honor that anybody would listen. And thanks to The Money Show. Thank you, Gary. And can you just give us your contact uh, information again so I can throw it in the chat in case because you did have a couple questions I just want people to be able to reach out sure uh Gar at garyk.com you can just email me just press the button or gcallbomb at callbomb.net okay great um so thank you Gary for your presentation today and thank you to our audience for joining us I will be putting that information in the chat and do stay tuned for more presentations today